Hey, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us once again for uh, the class on the six consecutive mitzvot that we are uh, dealing with. So uh, today we're up to number four, right? Uh, sorry, number five. Yes, last week we spoke about number four. Uh, we spoke about loving God uh, and what it means to, to love God uh, and the idea of also what it means to love yourself and how to love other people. Uh, and we uh, elaborate on that extensively uh, last week. Today I want to talk about number five, which is a fear of God. Uh, now, what does it mean to fear God? Right, what does it mean to fear God? So when, you, when, when someone hears the word fear, right, typically when you hear the word fear, what goes through your mind? People think uh, fear is something to run away from. Right? Fear is uh, someone, uh, you know, a dangerous thing in a dangerous situation. And, and that's part of human instinct. Your brain automatically uh, assumes and associates uh, that, uh, that, that, uh, that we have to go ahead and, and fear God automatically. Right? Uh, the concept of fear of, of, of being scared and running away, that's what fear represents. Right? And that's how uh, human comprehension uh, yeah, something bad, right? Sets human comprehension in our brain and instinct automatically when we think of fear or, or hear the word fear, it's, it's, it's in a negative light. So we have to reanalyze this idea of fear. And what does that mean, the fear of God? So we're supposed to be scared of God? To a certain degree, there is a fear of God, uh, uh, being scared of God. But I want to discuss today uh, a fascinating insight of what Judaism reflect, lo looks at fear and how Judaism uh, uh, this, uh, teaches us what it means to fear God. So how do we say the word fear, or we're going to talk about later a better word, right? the awe of God, being having the awe of God. What does it mean? How do we say the Hebrew word yira, fear? As I just said, yira, right? Fear in Hebrew, in Lashon HaKodesh, is yira. What else does the word yira mean? The word yira also comes from seeing, right? Yair, right? To see, right? God sees, right? So yira, fear, and to see is from the same word. Now, as we mentioned before, we talk about this many times, that in the Jewish language, and in Lashon Kodesh, there's no coincidence why certain words mean the same thing. You know, I was, uh, I was talking to Hubi yesterday. Um, I was bringing home from camp. It was yesterday or the day before. Uh, and uh, she was telling me that they were learning about the word here, right? She said, you know, that is so cool, right? The word here means here and to here, right? And being here. And it's so cool. There's so many different things that it means. Now, is there any connection between that and them? No. There's no connection because in Judaism, in, in secular language, there's no connection between one word and another word. It just happened to work that way. But in Lashon HaKodesh, in the Jewish language, God's language, there's a rhyme and a reason why words mean the same thing. So why is it that the word yira, which we translate as fear, or we'll see later, the ah, right, is the same word as yira to see? Right, they wrote to see the same the same root of the word. So, what's the connection between the two of them? And the answer gives us an insight into what it truly means to fear God. What does it mean, Yirat Hashem, the fear of God? The answer is that the idea of life. We have to open up our eyes to be able to see opportunities, to seize opportunities, to be able to get closer to God. And to open up our eyes and to truly see the reality, the true reality. And we, we, we have mirages and we have things and we, we think this is real. We think that is real. But how do we know what the real, real reality is? Right? There's an alternate reality. There's a, a virtual reality. There's a, a reality we make up in our brain. There's a reality that, that uh, we, we are doctrinated about. How do we see the real reality? One of the ways to see the true reality is through Yirat Hashem, the fear of Hashem. And that's what I want to home in on. 
right? I want to home in on this idea of the connection in between yira, fear, oddness, and seeing. Yira, to be able to see, to truly see properly. I, I've said this before, this is a, um, but I think it's important to repeat. In Ethics of Our Father, there's a very fascinating Mishnah, and it says like this, right? Istakel means to see, right? Look at three things and you won't come to Anavera. You won't come to transgression. Commentaries ask, what are these three things that we, what we have to? I mean, the, sorry, that continues the Pirkei Avot, right? You should know where you're from, right? You should know where you're going to. And, and, uh, and there's always someone on top watching you. Now, I've asked this question many times, and I've seen, thank God, others ask this question. And the question is like this. Look at three things and you won't come to, to, you won't come to, to do sin. I just said this off by heart. Right? Istakal means knowledge, right? I just said it off by heart, and I promise you I've done sin. There's not a righteous person in the world that hasn't sinned. So how can he say you won't do sin? You could say this will help you not to do sin, help you not to do Avera. But to give you a, uh, to, to, to say a statement and to say there won't be any sin, how can you do something like that? And the answer is because he uses a very careful word. He says, stakel, look. There's different levels of knowledge. There's knowing something. There's knowing something because someone that told you or knowing it from the news or from Facebook, right? Or knowing it because you, or knowing it because you trust the person that's telling you this or many people told you this. Right? The, there, there's different levels of how you associate with what you know and how much you believe it or you don't believe it. What is the highest level of, what's the highest level of knowledge? How is it that one could truly believe something and there won't be anything to be able to rock or to shake that belief of what he believes or what he sees? It's through seeing, as I just said. If I see something in my own eyes, I walk outside right now and I see snow fall, uh, falling from the sky, right? I, I, I see the snow myself. If someone tells me that it's snowing right now, I'll tell them they're crazy. If someone tells me in the middle of uh, February that there's flurries outside in Jacksonville, it could be possible. It happens every once in a while. Right? Flurries, not real flurries, fake flurries. I mean, like little, little flurries. I've seen it. So in the middle of February, maybe. I, will I believe them right away? I don't know. Right? If I hear it on the news and say, oh my God, it's breaking news, it's flooring outside, okay, I'll believe it. But until I go outside and I see it with my own eyes, I can have doubt. Maybe they don't really know what flurries is. Maybe they thought it was flurries. Uh, maybe whatever. So seeing something with your own eyes is the highest level of what, for someone to be able to know something to its depth. And not through a video camera, because maybe I'm in Japan right now and I just have a screenshot, right? Then it looks like it's the back of my office. I can do that. Change my back. Maybe I'm in Japan right now. Who knows? So seeing through a camera, a, a picture, pictures can be manipulated. The highest level of seeing is through your own eyes. Actually seeing it. That's why in Judaism, Right? In Torah law, in the court, they trust only two witnesses. Now, not one, because maybe the guy's lying, and typically we want to assume two people come with the same lie, and as they're getting paid, it happens. But they see with their own, their own eyes. They have to be able to see the action. They ask some questions to say, hey, did you see what happened? Did you see that person stealing? Did you see that person transgress about? Did you see that person kill that person? Did you see that person molest that person? Whatever it is, you have to actually see it. Because seeing is the highest level of knowledge. And my friends, that's, that's the connection over here. Being able to see something allows you to believe in that thing. Yira, fear of God, and we're going to give different examples and different things that push us away from fear, is the tool that allows you to be able to believe in God. Fear is like in a mix and motion. Right? There's positive and negative aspects. Right? The negative... Fear could, right, disable you. Someone's in fear, like a deer stuck in the headlights, right? You get stuck in fear. You, 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 you just can't move. Or positive fear, 
it gives you a boost of energy, right? An adrenaline. It's like, uh, God forbid, a mother or, or, or someone sees someone uh, stuck, right? Someone's chasing you, and right? A snake pops out, you run, you jump over a fence you've never done, you run the 100, the 100 meter marathon in 30 seconds and less. And you get that adrenaline, and you're moving, you're... So fear, it can be used for good or for bad. It could freeze you, or it could give you that boost, give you that energy. So we're going to talk about a couple of things, right, that help us to, that fear will help us and how to uh, go away from myths of fear. We're going to talk about uh, four different myths that people think that fear is negative and how it hinders them. And we're going to show how, on the contrary, right, fear can help you grow and what it truly means, Yirat Hashem, the fear of God. Because fear of God means to say that we are able to acquire and to do the mitzvot to the best that we can. That's what fear of God is. Yirat Hashem allows you to, to do the mitzvot of God. I've given this example many times. Imagine someone has a video doing a documentary on their life, and they walk into a store and they want to shoplift. Really? They're not going to shoplift. There's a, doctor, there's a camera right there. Fear of God is telling us that there's cameras everywhere. God could see us everywhere. So it gives us the, the push to do the right thing. As we spoke about last, last week, love of God is the highest level. But we're going to speak about why we need fear. So let's go through number one, okay? And if there's any questions, please feel free to write it in the, in, in the chat, right? I'll be more than happy to answer any questions during the thing. So number one, myth number one, fear is painful. I had fear is painful. I don't want to have fear. Why do we want fear? Why did God make fear? Fear of God. Well, fear is painful. Right? It's, it's uncomfortable. It's threatening, as we said. Right? But there's a whole industry, my friends. There's a whole industry that people want to connect with fear. Roller coasters, jumping, uh, bungee jumping, right? jumping out of airplanes. There's a whole industry out there. How does that work? Right? Fear is painful. Fear is terrible. Can't have fear. But there's a whole industry out there. Right? There's a whole section of, of movies. Horror. Right? Horror movies. It gets you scared. What, how do we connect with this? What does that mean exactly? Right? This whole idea of, of a fear uh, giving us this adrenaline, this giving us this whole industry of, of fear. What is it? Right? Because fear is not... It, it, it's a mistake to think that fear is painful, right? Fear is uncomfortable, but it delivers great pleasure, right? Because by, by, by overcoming, right? Every, every time you overcome that fear, right? You feel powerful, right? You gather power. You feel powerful. You, you're, you're using your potential, right? You're, you're able to get the most out of life. You, you get off the roller coaster and you feel, whoa, I did it. And I was able to overcome my fear. I was able to overcome this and pass a scary movie. Ah, oh, I did it. I, just, ah, I survived. And the, the awareness of living through it and every moment is an excitement to be able to, to, to live through that moment, to be able to come out on the other end. And then we find, right, that people, after they get off the roller coaster, right, Maybe one, dot block, one block later, they're still talking about it, and then afterwards it's gone because it doesn't stay with you. Fear, that adrenaline, that, that excitement is there to, 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 to tell you that there's more to life than this the mundane that you're living in. There's more to life than just this mirage that we're living in. Fear of God, number one, it's not painful. You can look at it as painful, or you can look at it as an adrenaline. Oh my gosh, there's a God up there. <laughs> and every second, I have to make sure that I'm doing what He wants to do. And if I don't, it could be punishment. Could be, I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe not, because God doesn't punish right away. So there's there's a fear, and and there's a uh, there's a there's a um, 
there's an excitement of wanting to do the right thing, of connecting with God. That's one idea of fear. Now, I call this more a uh, 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 oneness, a relationship through fear, right? A relationship through fear. We, as I mentioned before, there's a concept of fear that it's awe, an awe of God, right? There's, there's, awe, there's a fear of punishment, yirat hachet, and this is yirat elokim, is a fear of God. A fear of, of punishment, right? There is something there, right? You're going to get punished that it is, you know, a certain thing that's holding us from not doing what we're not supposed to be doing, if you believe in it. Then there's Yerat Elohim, there's a fear of God, means to say there's an honest of God, being part of that greatness. Imagine, uh, you know, nowadays it's hard to imagine, um, but if you're a minister in a king's palace, at any minute, any second, you could lose favor. It was no, right? You can lose favor. Right now you're in favor with the king, right? You're holding, but you always constantly have to be on top of things and on top of your, 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 your adversaries and, and thinking and planning and making sure that you stay, you know, in the good graces of the king. There's, a, there's an honest, you want to be part of that, right? And you're constantly figuring out and planning and doing things. So the, the, this idea of this adrenaline of life is you constantly have to be trying to overcome and say, Yetzirah, he's our adversary. Right? The adversary is Yetzirah, is evil inclination. So we have to be uh, constantly reflecting and saying, how can I make sure that I stay in the good graces of God? So it's a Yerat This is a, an idea of Yerat Elohim, a fear of God, it means an honest of God that I want to keep that relationship with God. I, I want to be able to, to, to outsmart my adversary, who is the Yetzirah, the evil inclination. That's the adversary. So by, 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 by thinking of this and, and making sure that I'm doing the mitzvot, making sure I don't go down the street that I know that I have a temptation on something on that the street, or don't speak to someone that I know that I, uh, whenever I talk to them, I, I start speaking Lashon Hara, Yivol whatever it is, right? Planning, or that's that roller coaster, that's that horror movie. It's an excitement to life. It creates a, an excitement. It puts a jolt in your, in your Judaism. That's myth number one. Fear is not painful. Fear, on the contrary, is, is, is exciting. Fear puts excitement into your life. Right? Uh, it's, uh, your life's not dull anymore. People need something. So let's use that. That's number one. Number two, people think fear is paralyzing. Now, we, as we said, right, fear could be paralyzing. Right? It's like a deer stuck in the headlights. Right, uh, someone uh, gets stuck. He gets he. I don't know why I didn't say anything. I don't know why I didn't react. Right, he gets stuck and and there is there is an idea of fear is is paralyzing. But but on the contrary, right, the fear can generate superhuman feats. Right, fear could create the ability to to. To, to, as I mentioned before, but now we're breaking down each one, fear could allow you to utilize and to connect to energies and powers that you didn't even realize you had inside. You didn't realize you had inside. Right? As I mentioned before, right? Or it's introducing this idea, right? God forbid uh, someone sees a child stuck underneath a car, they, the fear of the, the per thing, they could you so much energy, a snake is coming to bite you, right? If you are able to tap into the fear, not allow it to freeze, but on the contrary, you could find strength that you never knew you had inside of yourself. Inner strength that manifests itself externally. Fear is only damaging when you run away and don't confront it. How do we connect to this energy? How do we connect to this power that that we could connect with car with this with with uh, fear is if we don't run away from it when we run away from fear we don't want to connect with fear so then we become paralyzed right and then it's it's, it's painful and we we can't do anything about it and then we're stuck like a deer in the headlights what if we confront the fear Meaning to say, if we say, we know even inclination, you're out there. You know, we know there's going to be punishment. We know there's going to be challenges. So then we could tap into strength that we never knew we had. Inner self-control. 
inner motivation to do the right thing. Right, uh, you know, uh, a cowboy riding the, the these uh, wild is a sport, right? Uh, of of and they have in certain you know uh, uh, like bars or salons, you know, that uh, they have this wild bull, right? And you sit on it and you try to stay on, right? And it's actually a sport. <laughs> Whatever people have different things, right? So it, it, by him being tossed, right, it's alerting him. Every move he's trying to see how the bull is and how to maneuver his body and how to, he or she is going to stay, be able to stay on. That's the same thing. We have to constantly be aware of the evil inclination in our lives of where he's trying to attack us. So let's use the fear of God. Right? Let's use, number one, we spoke about that fear is not painful, right? but fear puts life into us. Right? We can, we, we have to, we, it's, it's exhilarating. It's, 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 it gives, it, it makes us alive, right? An honest of God, connecting to that honest and being aware that there's always someone trying to, uh, the Yitzhara to try to get us out of there. Number two, we're saying is not only, not only is it, is it life, but it also empowers us. It gives us an inner strength and tap into powers that we never realized we had. It allows us to, to focus on what things are, how things are happening, focus where he's trying to get us, be able to tap into in the strength, to be able to refrain from doing things. That's power. That's how you utilize fear in a positive way, confronting it and not allowing it to paralyze you. And everything we're saying, we're talking about in a relationship with God and the fear of, of Hashem and of Beirut. This is the same thing in life also. This, uh, everything in, in, our, in, our, in our secular life, right, in our day-to-day -day lives, right, there could be people that we're, we're, we're scared of. Right? It could be things that we're scared of, certain things that, you know, uh, we think are paralyzing us. If we confront it and we recognize that on the contrary, we can find inner strength to overcome things, and right? we become much stronger people. Just, uh, just, uh, just to put it out there, to remind ourselves that these are all lessons for day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day -day life. And we're homing in the concept of fear of God. This is a, a lesson for 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 day-to-day -day activities. So that's number two. Number three. Any questions or comments so far? All good. Okay. Number three. And fear means loss of freedom. People think that if I fear, I have no freedom. Right. Right? People avoid fear because in order to preserve the independence, right? Right? We think that if there's an outside force telling us what to do, we'll be intimidated to becoming a robot. Rather, choose to do the right thing on our own. Right? I want to do it because I believe in this. I don't want to be do it because I'm scared that because uh, uh, God's going to punish me. I don't want to be doing it because I think that uh, you know uh, the lightning is going to come and strike me down. I don't want to not speed because of a cop. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to not uh, steal because of cops and law and order, because of what's right and wrong, an internal justice that I have in myself, because that's freedom. My friends, fear of God, fear of Hashem does not violate our freedom. Why? On the contrary, it's there to give us potential, like we explained. Because losing freedom only comes... If the person that is perpetrating the, the, the fear or the, the, the laws right, wants to control us. But God gave us free will. God doesn't want to control us. God gave us free will. He told us, choose life, but it's your choice. We have full control over what we do and we don't do. So the, the idea of fear is not to control it because if the idea of fear was to control us, God would not give us free will. God wants robots. He can make us robots. Right? He can make us do whatever we want. So why does God have to give us free will and then fear, put fear in us for us to be robots? Like, let's think about that. Really? Right? God wants to control us? No. He wants to take away our freedom? No. That's free will. Otherwise, you would have made us, uh, you know, you would have made us robots. You would have made us without thinking. You would, have made us, you would have made us in a way that we would not do anything against God. You know, there's these, all these sci-fi movies of 
you know, all these mad scientists that uh, play around with the brain and they make people do certain things and act certain ways. God doesn't need any of those machineries. God could have just made us that way. And we just do what, he, what, what we're told. But God didn't create us that way. So, so, so to think that he created fear to control us, really? He needs to create fear to control us? Come on, let's think about that for a second. Let him marinate. It's just ludicrous. It makes no sense. So, so, so this fear, this myth that I'm not going to fear, I'm not going to allow fear to dictate or to control me, right, or to take away my freedom, right, or, or I'm not going to do it because I'm scared. I, I only do what's right and wrong, right? I, I work with my morals of what I think is, is correct or wrong, right? And, and, and I'm not going to let punishment or any of that stuff dictate how I do things. You're just being ignorant. Why did God give us fear? Is to help us out. Right? It's to motivate us. Right? Uh, you, you know, everybody knows, right? You keep on selling to work late, you're going to get fired. What, the boss wants to control you? That you shouldn't to, to come to work on time? That's what he tells you, or he gives you a warning? Right? Or if you mess up on a project too many times, right? You're going you're gonna to get fired, you're going to get the duck pay. What, is, is it trying to control you? Maybe there are some bosses like that, but the majority of bosses don't. They want to motivate you. They want you to have a little fear to motivate you. That's what they want. They want you to be motivated to do the right thing. They want you to be motivated to get on time. They want you to be motivated to work harder. Why do we have tests in school and other places? We have tests and we get marked on it. To control you? No, there are people that think that way. Oh, the school's controlling. No, it's to motivate you. To motivate you. My friends, it's the same thing. God wants to motivate us. God gave us free will, but he knows that it's hard out there. He knows that there, he created an evil inclination that's out there to go ahead and try to get to you on every turn. And that's exactly how we have free will. Otherwise, we wouldn't have free will. If there's no, there's no way of us to think that something was good or bad, we wouldn't have free will. So, so free will is the essence of how we're able to get closer to God. And by having the evil inclination, the, the, the negative out there, and each one of us have our own personal ones, and then there's collectively, and there's certain things that every generation has, But those different things are there to help us reach our potential. But God gave us a gift. God gave us a gift to motivate us. He said, guys, if you don't do what I tell you to do, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be consequences. And I'm letting you know that. It's your choice. Your choice. You have to think about how much you believe in that or how much you don't believe in that. Yira is seeing also. We have to focus. We have to reflect. And we have to see how much we believe that there's punishment. The more we believe this punishment, the more we're motivated. So, 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 so it, fear of Hashem right, is not to take away our freedom in any way. As we said, it's ludicrous. It makes no sense. Fear of Hashem is there to, to motivate us. To motivate us, to give us a push to do the right thing, and then we'll talk about this in a minute. Right? But that, that should propel us to the next level. We'll talk about it in a minute. But that is that is that is what fear of Hashem is to be able to for us to get to the greatest that we can be. So as you see, things are building up. So re, let's just re. Group for a second, and we'll, 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 we'll do number four in a minute. Number one, we spoke about right, that fear is not painful. Right? It doesn't hurt. On the contrary, it's exhilarating. Right? It, it, it gives us a purpose in life. Right? It, 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 it gives, keeps us in anticipation. It, keeps, it, gives us, it gives us, allows us to reflect and look and, and, and think and, and be alive. Number two, we said fear is not paralyzing. 
Fear, on the contrary, allows us to tap into to strength and to, and to abilities that we never knew we had. And we just have to confront the fear. We can't run away from fear. And, and, and we have to be able to, to, to confront the, the, the powers and the strength with internally that we have to be able to conquer. So many times I, I hear people say right, that I, uh, I can't do anything, right? I can't take the next step. They're scared. They're scared. They're, they're, they're being paralyzed by their fear. They're scared of how their family's going to think or their spouses, right? Or their children or their parents, their coworkers, their friends. They're scared to take the next step, whatever that is. If it's kosher, if it's Shabbos, it's just, if it's not speaking Lashon Hara, not being a gossiper anymore, wh whatever someone's holding, davening a little more, giving more charity. We all have so many things to work on. So, we're not talking about any one specific person. Learning a little more Torah, being kinder to people, making sure that we don't, uh, you know, uh, instigate, uh, you know, uh, chats and, 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 and posts on Facebook and WhatsApps and all that stuff. We all have what to work on. I promise you. But, but we're scared to take that next level because we're, we feel comfortable in our comfort zone. Right? And, and, and we're scared of, 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 of what the other person's going to say or our spouse or our friends or whatever it is. And we're paralyzed in where we are. And we can never reach our potential if we're paralyzed. So we have to confront the fear and say, no, I'm going to overcome it. And even inclination, I'm going to find a way to be able to overcome this. So fear, on the contrary, should allow you to find that inner strength to say, I am going to be able to do this and I'm not going to be scared of anything because I fear God. Because I want to have a relationship with God. That's number two. Number three, right, is free, fear does not take away freedom, what some people think. Oh, fear is just to control us. There are, don't get me wrong, there are people that do that, right? The Nazis and, 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 and the communists and others, right? They put fear to control you. That's not what God wants. That's only because they want to control you. God gave us free will, so how could we even think of thinking that God wants to control us? He gave us free will. So what's fear? Fear is on the contrary to allow you to find, right? To propel you, to be able to allow, to, uh, to give you that, that boost to do the right thing. We all need a help. We all need a boost. Even though we want to do the right thing, sometimes we get stuck. So the fear is to, to, to nudge you in the right direction. Like that boss that tells the guy, hey, you come, come late three more times, you're fired, right? Or if you fail on a test, gives you that push so it's not a taking away our freedom now number four right we think the fear is is is, is um it's the meaning sorry and right? we think fear is the meaning right i'm not a fearful person i'm strong and right? i'm not gonna be scared of anybody i'll be able to overcome everything right opposite of, of, of paralyzing, right? But in, in a negative way, right? It's the meaning. I can't be scared. I'm not scared of anybody. I'm, I'm not scared. I'm the humans were in control. I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of God. What? Right? Certain people think that fear is the meaning, right? It's not. Now, how does this demeaning work with a fear of God? The meaning of fear of God, okay, listen, if God's all in control, you can't take control over God. So one of the ways that people think that fear is demeaning uh, with a relationship to God is, I am not going to have a relationship with God only because of fear. I want to have the best way of relationship with God. You know what that best way of relationship with God is? A love of God. It's true. We spoke about that. We started that off. The best relationship with God, with Hashem, is Havat Hashem, love of Hashem. And we spoke about that last week. Love. Hava. So therefore, I am not going to have fear of God. I'm only going to do the mitzvah when I have love of God. Because I am not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make my relationship with God demeaning in a, in, a, in, a, in a form of fear. Me? No. I'm only going to do it because I love God. Because I think it's right and wrong. And the answer is, you're right. Fear of God is secondary. And the highest level is Love of God, to do it out of love. 
but how many times, right, do we really do something because of it's a tremendous high level? And it's a tremendous high level. Let's be honest with ourselves. We need a motivation. We need that motivation. And as the Talmud tells us, Shalolishma, Balishma. When you do things not for the right reason, but within the right reason, you're doing it because you want to have a relationship with God, but you know you need that motivation, not because of fear, not only because of fear of, of an Avera that you're going to get punished. As we said, Yirat Chet is on a lower level. It's a start. But if somehow someone else comes in, the evil inclination comes and convinces you that he'll be, you'll be worse off if you don't listen to God, you're going to listen to the evil inclination. That means you say the person's only loyal to himself. There's no such way, of course. But the evil inclination may, can make us think a lot of things. It means the person's only loyal to himself. And that's a low level, but it's a start. But what we're talking about, as we said, Yirat Hashem means an, uh, an awe of God, a, a way of motivating ourselves to have a relationship with God through all the different steps that we spoke about. So as the Talmud tells us, Shalolishma, Balishma, when someone does something not for the right reason, means to say within the right reason, not for the epitome of reason, of doing it just because you love God. You're doing it just because you want to have that relationship with God like we spoke about last week, which is a very high level. We need a motivation. And God gave us that motivation, an awe of God. A yirat Hashem. Realizing that we need that push. We need that motivation. Let's be honest with ourselves. Right? Someone came and told you right, this positive motivation, the tzchar mitzvah, the reward of a mitzvah, and there's unfortunately negative motivation. Punishment, failing a test, getting fired. We need a balance of both. Now, if someone tells you, you know, there's this unbelievable, uh, great project uh, bringing in the homeless, right, and then putting, the, we've got housing for them, let's go out and try to find all the homeless and put them. Yeah, it's great, let's go do it. You do it, you do it, unless you're truly, truly motivated, right, and you're a saint of a person, after a little while, you're going to get bored out of it. Let's be honest. But if they tell you that for every homeless person you bring in, you'll get $100, Oh, you'll be motivated. Right? You'll be finding all the homeless people around. There won't be any homeless people around anymore. Get $100 for every homeless person? Think about it. You have another push to do the right thing. Your heart's in the right place. Doesn't mean to say you're not, your heart's not in the right place. You, you would have started doing it even, even without the $100. Shouldn't find this demeaning, the motivation. The motivation is there to allow you to keep on doing the right mitzvah, the right thing, and then it, it keeps, and since you do have the right attitude, because you do want to have the relationship with Hashem, eventually it will grow in you that, that the motivation is very secondary. And that's building a relationship with Hashem. As we spoke about last week, to a certain degree, there's, an, there's a benefit of giving a hundred ones of charity instead of one big hundred dollar bill. We spoke about this last week because when you constantly do a mitzvah, right, you're constantly doing something, right, it, it builds within you. I think we spoke about this last week. Maybe we spoke about it in the Monday night class. I don't recall. I think we spoke about this last week. And the, the more you do something, right, it makes it part of you. And then you, it, it's become second nature to you. By becoming second nature, it becomes part of what you want to do. But we need those motivations to constantly to continue do those things that it becomes part of you that you move up a notch and now your love of God and your relationship with God even, becomes even greater. So when it's done for the right thing, when the motivation, either a positive motivation, the reward of a mitzvah, right, or a negative motivation, the fear of a sin, right, uh, or or our transgression or the punishment or falling out of favor with God. When it's done, because with the background of you really want to do the right thing, not just because I'm scared that I'm going to get punished, and that's the only reason why I'm doing it. That is a level. Right? At least you believe in God that there is punishment. That's a level. Don't get me wrong. But when it's a motivation based on what you want, it's nothing to be demeaning about. On the contrary, as we said, God's not here to take away your freedom. God's here to help you out. We all need a motivation. Don't be so arrogant to think that you don't need motivation. 
So these are four steps, four concepts of how we have to look at fear and on the contrary, take away these myths of what people think fear is about. And fear on the contrary is a motivator, right? Fear is not taking away your freedom, but on the contrary, a motivator. Fear is not paralyzing, but on the contrary, it gives, find, allows you to find inner strength. Right? Fear, is not, uh, fear is not painful, but on the contrary, allows you to truly live. And all these things lead up to number four that we spoke about, fear is not demeaning. Fear, actually, if you connect to fear in the right way, you have the greatest self-confidence because you know that you're not arrogant, that you don't need to push, you don't need to help. You have self-confidence. You're trying to do the right thing, but you know that you need help. So it's not demeaning. On the contrary, it shows, you, it shows what kind of person you are, that you recognize that you're human and we need help. Now, I want to end with one idea. And I think it puts everything in perspective of everything what we spoke about. There's, in the human body, we have, we have pain. Right? We have pain, unfortunately, but fortunately. Right? Because if you, uh, God forbid, uh, you put on the hot water and you didn't realize, right? sure it happened to us more than once, and right? you put the bath on or the shower or washing dishes, and you stick your finger in, right? and you go, out and you pull it back. Right? So that pain prevented your hand from burning. Pain, it was a second pain, or it's a couple minutes pain, or you maybe even have to put an ointment on it if it's really bad. But the pain creates a reflex that you pull back. And you don't allow yourself to get hurt even worse or get burnt. So we, we need pain. We need pain to jolt us back to reality. We need pain to prevent a worse, something worse from, from happening. And unfortunately, people that don't have pain get burned. They have to be much more diligent. They have to be much more concerned. You know, um, my, my, my sister, Batya, who I think you're all familiar with, um, until, I don't remember the exact age, but I think until the age of, of uh, six or something like that, and I have to find out, she didn't have pain in her legs. Before she took a bath, we would have to check the, the bath to make sure that the water was a good temperature because she could put her legs in and she wouldn't feel if it was too hot or too cold. She had no pain in her legs. Thank God she has pain now through therapies and things like that. But there are people out that don't have pain and they don't realize that they're getting burnt. My friends, that is what punish, fear of punishment is sort of putting everything together, it's, it's that it, the, the fear, the awness, and all these things are our are, are pain sense. sense. It's, it's, it's our ability to be able to feel pain, be able to say, hey, I'm going the wrong track. I don't want to burn myself completely. It's supposed to jolt you back to reality. It's supposed to, as we said, look at all options, like that cowboy right, on that wild bull. And make us reflect and think and, and find that inner strength to get out of the situation we're in that we don't steep all the way down and get burned completely. So Yirat Hashem, fear of God, is not something to look down upon. It's not something to say, well, I really want to reach Ahavat Hashem. That's true, we all want to reach Ahavat Hashem. But Yirat Hashem, fear of God, is a step to get to there. And even when you get to there, you'll still need fear of God because you need that constant motivation. You need that constant reminder, that pain nerves. to be constant reminder to say, hey, we can't slip. We, gotta, we need help. This is not to take away our, our freedom. It's on the contrary. To allow us to motivate, our, to motivate ourselves to do what we want to do. It's not pain, it's life. So hopefully we'll all be able to reflect on this and connect to true Yirat Hashem, to true honest of God, fear of God, because it should open up our eyes. As we start off, Yirat is also to see. The, the, the fear of God should, and, and the different things that we spoke about should open up our eyes to what truly we need to do in this reality, to find the true reality of what our real purpose in this world is, and to connect to that and to grow 
and to find our relationship with God. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today.